We open in Bell Reef Penitentiary, where Deadshot is going at his punching bag furiously. However, that's soon interrupted, as guards led by one Captain Briggs brings Floyd a very, very lousy meal. Griggs begins to taunt Deadshot, where Deadshot decides to threaten that he'll get him someday. Griggs takes offense to this and straps Deadshot to a chair, only to have him beaten by other guards. Meanwhile, Harley Quinn is hanging upside down in her cell, where Griggs shows up to see her. When Harley gets too close to Griggs, he has one of the guards use a device to electrify the bars. This causes Harley to have a flashback of when she first showed up at the place, dark raving mad. We then flash over to Amanda Waller, who meets with her associates, Admiral Olsen and Dexter Tolliver. This is to discuss the organization of Task Force X, her idea of creating a team of the most dangerous criminals to combat any possible major catastrophe. Her first pick is Deadshot himself, who is an expert marksman. This is shown in a flashback where he's able to successfully kill a man by ricocheting his bullet off of several surfaces, and also getting double the payout from his employer. It's also revealed that the reason he's in prison is because of Batman. Batman had confronted him when he was with his daughter. While Deadshot was ready to attack Batman, his daughter got in the way and pleaded for Deadshot to stand down. Deadshot relented, and Batman took him in. Waller's next recruit is somebody we've already been introduced to in Harley Quinn, who was originally a therapist named Dr. Harleen Quinzel before she turned to a life of crime after being enamored by the Joker. It's revealed that she was arrested during a high-speed chase where Batman caught her, but the Joker had escaped. Waller wants her for Task Force X, as she's even crazier and also just as talented as the Joker. We're then introduced to the rest of Task Force X, which includes one Captain Boomerang, a vigilante who uses a bladed boomerang and has a penchant for double-crossing his partners, and next is Chato Satana, a former gangbanger known as El Diablo. El Diablo possesses pyrokinetic abilities, and he willingly turned himself in. After that, there's Killer Croc, a thug with an unusual disorder that gives him green, scaly skin. Croc is both a known murderer and a known cannibal, devouring anybody that crossed him. The final pick, though, is Dr. June Moon, an archaeologist who recently came across the cave and found an idol. This idol carried and released the spirit of a 6,000-year-old witch called the Enchantress. While the Enchantress has full control over June, Amanda Waller has full control over the Enchantress by carrying the Enchantress's own heart and threatening to hurt it every time she's out of line. Helping Task Force X is one Colonel Rick Flagg, who's motivated to help Task Force as he's in love with June and wants to find a way to fix her. Waller then presents her idea to the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and while the chairman himself is not feeling the plan, Walter then tells June to release the Enchantress. The Enchantress comes out and starts demonstrating her powers, but before she can get too out of control, Waller then pokes her heart, thus making her yield. Walter explains that this is an expendable task force used to carry out the government's dirtiest operations, and any villains that actually do get caught are thrown under the bus. We then go to Bell Reeve, where Waller is meeting with Deadshot, who demonstrates his skills. He demands that if this mission is successful, that he gets a full release and also custody of his daughter, demanding more to Waller than the Flag. Later that night, June then turns into the Enchantress, and she distracts Flag with terrifying visions. The Enchantress then teleports to Waller's home and finds another idol that contains the spirit of her brother, Incubus. The Enchantress then goes to the Midway City train station, finds a random victim, and uses their body to bring Incubus back to life. Now reunited, the two discuss Enchantress's plan to create a machine to wipe out all of humanity. Incubus then starts his rampage, killing three random people and causing a lot more destruction in his true form. Waller is alerted to the chaos and decides it's time to activate Task Force X. The villains are then taken from their cells and are given Waller's insurance, an injection filled to the brim with nanobombs that will go off if they fail or they all try to escape. Each one of them are brought to a base where they're briefed on their mission, which is to head into Midway City and retrieve a mark. On top of all the other recruits, we also have a late one named Slipknot, whose power is that he's able to climb pretty much anything. And also joining Rick Flagg willingly on the mission is Tatsu Yamashiro, also known as Katana, who is a lethal Japanese assassin whose sword contains the souls of those that she has killed. We then flash over to an apartment where one of the Joker's henchmen barges in and tells the Joker about Harley's situation. The Joker goes on to find Griggs in a casino and tortures him until he tells him everything. The Joker and his henchmen then attack the facility where the nanobombs were produced, with the Joker showing the head doctor that he's actually kidnapped his wife to blackmail him into helping him. We then flash over to the Enchantress, who's in a lot of pain due to Amanda Waller stabbing her heart repeatedly. Incubus saves his sister by turning her into a more powerful form. 
With that happening, the squad is also flown into Midway City, where Enchantress's soldiers shoot them down and cause their chopper to crash land. They then walk to their destination, however Slipknot attempts to make an escape. While he is successful in shooting a grapple hook to try and escape, Flag then sets off his bombs, proving that he isn't bluffing. The squad is then beset upon by creatures that were formerly humans under the control of the Enchantress. This prompts them to defend themselves. Deadshot is able to hit every target that he shoots at. Harley shoots and whacks the minions with her baseball bat, and Katana slices them with her sword, and Boomerang, of course, uses his boomerangs. However, Diablo decides to sit this one out. Flag is then taken by the minions, and Harley almost lets him die, but Deadshot reminds her that if he dies, that they all die. Reluctantly, she agrees to save Flag and kills the minions. Flag then leads the squad to a building to find their mark. Harley takes an elevator and is attacked by more minions, where she easily kills them before rejoining the squad. While more minions do attack them, they're able to hold their own, and the minions are completely decimated as Deadshot eggs on Diablo to unleash the full might of his fire powers. Diablo completely incinerates the minions and leaves the other characters in mostly awe. As they start walking to their destination, Harley has a flashback to the night she became Harley Quinn. Joker had brought her to a chemical plant and convinced her to live for him. She then willingly tossed herself into a vat of chemicals, changing her forever. Back in the present, Flag then enters a room to find Waller waiting for him. As they discuss their mission, she then kills the other four agents that are present, as they knew too much apparently. After that, the squad, Waller, and Flag all go to the rooftop for extraction. However, their chopper has been compromised and has been hijacked by Joker and his men. One of the men even deactivates the bomb in Harley's neck, allowing her to escape with the Joker. Waller then orders Deadshot to shoot her down with the promise of custody of his daughter, and while Deadshot does indeed obey that order, he intentionally misses Harley. Despite the purposeful miss, the chopper starts to go down, with Harley falling onto a nearby rooftop and the Joker going down with the chopper. Waller is then captured by the Enchantress's minions and brought to her, where she retrieves her heart and gets even more power. Harley then rejoins the squad when they come across her on their path. Deadshot finds Waller's case file and learns the truth about their mission. This prompts him to demand an explanation from Flag, where he admits that about three days earlier, he and June went underground together to set something up, but she then morphed into the Enchantress and abandoned him. The squad decides to ditch the mission and head into a bar to get a drink. The bar is then served drinks by Harley acting as a barmaid, and they start to bond. Deadshot informs them that he knows they're just pawns in Mahler's plan and that they're all very expendable. During all the conversations, Diablo discusses why he stopped using his powers. He used to have a family, however, his wife found out about his life as a gangster, and in a fit of rage, Diablo burned their house down with Grace and his two children inside. Their conversations are interrupted by Flag when he enters the bar to tell the squad they can all go free if they choose, as he breaks the detonator to their bombs. He gives Deadshot letters from his daughter, showing she had written to him every single day. This gives Deadshot the motivation to continue the mission, and thus lead the rest of the squad to join him as well. They then form a plan to plant a bomb beneath the station in order to take out Incubus, so that the rest of the squad can get close enough to the Enchantress. Croc goes with Flag's men to head into the sewers and place the bomb. The rest of the squad hides, but the Enchantress senses them and offers them the things they want the most as she goes into their minds. For Deadshot, we see a vision of him killing Batman. Harley herself sees her and the Joker looking normal and starting a family. Flag sees himself simply with June. Diablo sees himself with his family, alive and well. However, he realizes quickly that it's a trick. He heads into the fight against Incubus, hurling his fire powers at him before morphing into his true form, a towering fire creature as big as Incubus. Diablo is able to overcome Incubus and holds him in the corner long enough for Croc and the others to place the bomb. Diablo decides to stay there and hold Incubus down as the bomb explodes, sacrificing himself and also killing Incubus. With the death of her brother, the Enchantress flies into a rage and takes on the entire squad. The squad tries their best, but the Enchantress is just far too powerful, and she's too evasive for any of them to get a proper hit on her. However, she decides to offer them what they want if they join her. Harley appears to accept her offer. However, at the last second, she tricks the Enchantress and uses a sword to cut her heart out. Killer Croc then throws a bag of explosives in the path of the Enchantress's machine as Deadshot gets ready to shoot at it. However, before he can pull the trigger, she changes the machine to make it look like Zoe, who begs him not to shoot. However, Deadshot does pull the trigger and hits the bombs, destroying the machine. The Enchantress is now completely weakened, and Flag holds her heart. He orders the witch to release June, but the Enchantress says she will not come back. 
Flag simply crushes the heart and kills the Enchantress. June peels off the witch's skin and returns to normal and embraces Flag. As the squad prepares to leave, Waller emerges with her own detonator. She says that they won't go free, only getting about 10 years off of their sentences. However, they will receive some special privileges while they're incarcerated. Deadshot is allowed to visit Zoe for a brief while before being escorted out by Flag. Kronk, on the other hand, is allowed to have cable TV in his cell. The only one who doesn't seem to benefit is Captain Boomerang, who gets moved into solitary confinement for his demands. Harley, on the other hand, is given an espresso machine in her cell. However, that machine doesn't last long as moments later, a group of mercs break into the penitentiary and start killing all of the guards before breaking into Harley's cell. It's then revealed that the Joker is still alive as he enters and embraces Harley, whispering into her ear, let's go home. And then credits. And then the closing credits scene, where Waller meets with Bruce Wayne in a restaurant. She requests protection from him in the aftermath of all the Enchantress's destruction and murder. For his protection, she gives him a case file on The Flash and Aquaman. As Bruce departs, Waller comments that he should stop working nights. Bruce says she should shut her operation down, since he and his new friends will be taking care of things.